getting to know East Boston from talking about the different neighborhoods that make up East Boston and what they have to offer from restaurants to schools to parks. Now, more and more people are being drawn to East Boston and it isn't just because of its convenient access to downtown Boston, the highways and as well as the airport. East Boston is home to 45,000 people and has been going through well re relative transformation as a development boom has taken hold with people discovering the exceptional value that East Boston has to offer. Currently, just over 50% of the population is of Hispanic descent, with the second largest being the white population at a hair under 37%. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. Welcome to the channel. To learn more about real estate, then don't forget to click that subscribe and like button below. And if you want to talk real estate, mano y mano, then find my information in the description below. Now, when I purchased my first home, I actually chose East Boston, and it was because of the convenience and the affordability. I felt it was also going to be one of the next up and coming areas of Boston. What I didn't realize when I purchased my first home was that East Boston offered so much more than just convenience and affordability. East Boston is actually made up of three different neighborhoods, Jeffreys Point, Orion Heights, and Eagle Hill. It's serviced by the Blue Line T line with four stops as well as the Silver Line that goes into Chelsea. Now, for the record, the Silver Line isn't a train line. They call it a rapid bus transit. It's a bus. There are also a lot of normal bus routes that run through East Boston for residents to take as well. Now, a breakdown of the neighborhoods and what they have to offer is coming, so just hang tight. Now, if it's parks that you like, then East Boston, well, they got you covered. The largest park is Belle Isle Marsh, which is about 360 acres, and is Boston's last remaining salt marsh, which offers landscaping, hiking paths, benches, and an observation tower. George, my St. Bernard, and I, we used to love walking this park. This park is in Orient Heights and is bordered by Winthrop as well as Revere. Then there's Pierce Park, which probably is considered East Boston's crown jewel park. This has to be one of Boston's best and most beautiful parks. It is beautifully landscaped park that provides direct access to the waterfront and some of the most spectacular views of downtown Boston as well as the Inner Harbor. Pierce Park sports a promenade, two pavilions that provide a view of the city, an amphitheater, an outdoor fitness center, and a large playground with Sprite feature. There is even a sailing center at Pierce Park that offers memberships to a variety of different sailboats. Now, while there are many other additional parks, I feel that honorable mentions are in East Boston are the East Boston Memorial Park and the Bremen Street Community Park, which has the East Boston Greenway passing through it. The Greenway um, is spans about 2.8 miles and goes from Pierce Park to Constitution Beach. Oh yeah, Constitution Beach. Neighborhoods and restaurants are next, but I can't forget to mention Constitution Beach, or as the locals actually call it, Shays Beach. Constitution Beach is located in Orient Heights. The beach is staffed with lifeguards in the summer and has a bathhouse with concessions, a large playground, and even tennis courts. Now, personally, I've never been there. The beaches at Revere and Winthrop, they tend to overshadow Constitution Beach. I personally found myself in Winthrop if I was actually headed to the beach. Restaurants. Now, locals would be remiss if you mentioned restaurants in East Boston and didn't say anything about Centarpios, but I'm not going to lie. I always kind of felt it was overrated. Restaurants that are in East Boston that have been featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives are Rhino's Place and Angela's Cafe. For the Santarpios faithful, I'm going to point out, eh, they haven't been on the show. Just saying. And there are many other awesome local restaurant spots throughout the neighborhood that are really worth taking a look at. And there's been more and more opening just in you know the last couple of years. As I mentioned, there are three neighborhoods in East Boston. We have Jeffreys Point, Orient Heights, Eagle Hill. Yeah, and people, yeah, Central Square is really part of Orient Heights. Few things are more important in a neighborhood than schools, which I'm going to talk about really shortly, so hang tight. Housing types consist of single-family homes, multifamily properties, as well as condos. Most condos are from two or three family properties that have been condo converted over the years. However, we're really starting to see quite a few larger condo developments as well, as East Boston has really become more of an uh, investor's paradise in that sense. Sorry, but just a two-second sidetrack on the neighborhoods, as the history of East Boston makes a really big difference in understanding the neighborhoods. East Boston actually used to be five individual islands that were filled in over the years. Eagle Hill was the largest island, with Jeffrey Point as the second largest. Now, these hills in the neighborhood used to be a lot more prominent, but that's what they used to help fill in part of the neighborhood. 
And the U.S. Army actually built what is today Logan Airport in 1923 with the first commercial plane touching down in 1927. So back to that neighborhood section. Jeffries Point is the most expensive neighborhood of East Boston. Jeffries Point looks over the harbor and has some of the most stunning views that you're ever going to see of Boston's skyline. Over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of young professionals be lured to this neighborhood because of the quick commute to downtown Boston, as well as its relative affordability when compared to other parts of Boston. I gotta throw in relative there. The Eagle Hill neighborhood is raw about roughly by Princeton Street and Chelsea Street, and then on two sides of the harbor. Most of the housing stock actually dates back to the 1800s, being one of the oldest neighborhoods in East Boston. Heck, my house is considered nearly new construction as it was built in 1902. Now, the majority of houses in Eagle Hill, they're either single families or two and three family homes. The neighborhood was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1998. I will say the negative about Eagle Hill is that the Blue Line T is a little bit of a hike and there are no buses that actually run through the interior of the neighborhood. Now, the Orient Heights neighborhood is the most northern neighborhood that borders Revere and Winthrop. Most of Orion Heights sits on top of a hill, which quite frankly, you can't really miss when you're driving along on Route 1. Like the other neighborhoods, you're going to find mostly single family and two to three family properties that have been condo converted over the years. This neighborhood has seen a lot of development as of late, and it will be home to a much more development in the future. It also borders the Suffolk Downs site, which hang in there as I'm going to talk about this huge development momentarily. Now, I mentioned Constitution Beach earlier, but Orient Heights is also home to Noyes Playground, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is 8.31 acres of playing fields as well as walking paths. There are eight public schools in East Boston, one high school, two middle schools, and five elementary schools. And one of the great things about East Boston schools and East Boston, it being a neighborhood, is that every child in East Boston is guaranteed a seat at an East Boston school due to its geography. Now, this is not the case for other neighborhoods around Boston, so that's an important fact. Excel Academy Charter School is a middle school that is also in East Boston. This school is currently ranked number 688 in the country for best schools, 134th best charter school in the country, and the 25th best school in the state by U.S. News. With a walk score of 84, East Boston isn't considered the most walkable neighborhood in Boston. But don't let that fool you in regards to the convenience, though. A person living in East Boston is in the financial district within 20 minutes from the furthest stop on the Blue Line. If you're jumping on the Blue Line from the Maverick T stop, then it's only going to take you a mere five minutes. The Blue Line takes residents to four stops in Boston Center, at Aquarium, State Street, Government Center, as well as Bowdoin. You can transfer to the Orange Line at State Street and to the Green Line at Government Center. Other commuting options is the MBTA Ferry, which would be pretty awesome way to get to work every day. And residents can also get to downtown Boston by the Sumner Tunnel or on Mass Pike through the Ted Williams Tunnel. One thing I really wanted to mention is a common misconception that airline noise is bad in East Boston. This is a huge myth. The flow of airplane traffic is dependent upon weather, but I would say the majority of traffic comes over South Boston, Winthrop, and Revere. The only runway that aligns with East Boston is runway 33L and 15R, going complete nerd on you, I know, which I found was rarely used and aligns to a very smaller outer section of Eagle Hill. East Boston has been home to a lot of development, and as of late, I am more confident that this development binge will continue. But it's hard to talk about East Boston and not discuss Suffolk Downs and this development. I was against the casino when it was proposed in East Boston, so frankly, I'm happy to see anything but a casino there. Now, the development is planned for 10.5 million square feet that will be on approximately 109 acres. The multi-phase proposal includes a new mixed-use neighborhood, a 40-acre publicly accessible open space system, which is awesome, and two retail squares at Suffolk Downs and Beachmont Stations. In the end, I personally think this is going to be a huge plus for the area, as it's really going to better link East Boston and Revere. There are many 20 to 100 unit plus developments in the planning, approved, and construction phases, so I figure it's best just to put a link below of all the new construction in East Boston. That way it's going to stay up to date in the description, so it'll be more informative and quickly become, otherwise it's just going to become quickly out of date, let's just say it that way. East Boston is a great neighborhood of Boston. Many have started comparing East Boston to Boston as the equivalent of Brooklyn to Manhattan. There are definitely some similarities. And if you're looking to learn more about Boston and the other neighborhoods that Boston has to offer, then this video on the screen now contains more information on other neighborhoods throughout Boston. Click and watch that video now. 
And if you want to talk in person about the real estate goals, then find my information in the description.